Welcome back to the Rio All Suites Hotel here in the heart of Las Vegas for our second semi-final in this year's Alpha Las Vegas Open between Aloysius Yap from Singapore and Wojtek Szefczyk all the way from Poland with me in the booth just down the road in Florida. Hi, Tony. How's it going, buddy? Great, looking forward to this. Alois is, of course, involved in that monster shootout. You had the pleasure of commentating on it. I watched it on the big screen. I couldn't even get in the arena. It was full. Yeah, you know, it was It was pretty awesome. It was pretty intense. And, you know, uh, let's see how Alois does, you know, this time around breaking because he really struggled badly to pocket a ball on the break in the previous set. So it's two races to four. As always, the format, the race does not change throughout the entire tournament. Two races to four, and if we level after two sets, we will go to that shootout. The game is 10 ball, of course. It's cool shot. Early 10s do count, but not on the break. If it's made on the break, it will be re-spotted. So, Tony, cast your expert eye across this first rack and tell us the pitfalls and, uh, well, where's the, where's the problems here? Well, I mean, he wants it. He wants to make it so that he can leave a cross bank, but not an easy one, you know. So that way he can cross bank the one ball, send the cue ball down here. That's why you never want to push close to the side because then you're letting him see too much of the one. And even if you can't shoot a stop shot, it makes it easier. Now, th this other strategy right here is a good one because over here, if you feel confident kicking this ball, you can always hit the top rail, hit the one ball. And even if the one ball hits off the six, there's a chance it'll go off the six, off the cushion and in front of the four. But obviously it has to be hit correctly and then with the right speed. Yes, the first time Wojtek has been in one of these tournaments. Very well known player on the Euro Tour mm -hmm. from Poland, of course, a hotbed of pool. And already we have one pole in the final. Viktor Zelensky who came through against Mika Imminent on the shootout. He's put Aloysius back in. Aloysius, 25 years old, already won one of these. He won Michigan last year. I had the pleasure of commentating with you, Tony. Yeah, that's right. We had a lot of, we had a blast that tournament. And we will be back in Michigan. He'll be there to defend his title in September. But for now, wow, that was oh, he's missed it. He, he overspun it. Very nice young man, Aloysius, a gentleman. Some people saying that my mic is a little low. Does that sound better? That's much better. It help. It does help if you put it near your mouth, Tony. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think he's going to be in trouble here, look. So he's going to be oh, on. Yeah, no, he's going to trap him here. And he's going to try to freeze him parallel to the six so that we cut off both rails possible. See? There, he did not. And oh. I'm pretty sure he tried, but, you know. I was going to say, it would be nice enough. if it had gone by the 10 there, Tony, wouldn't it? If oh, yeah. overhit it just slightly, it would have been nice to put it by the 10 in case he did miss it to leave himself an early combo. So he called the one in the corner, just in case. <laughs> Three rails here, is it? Oh, he's going one rail. He's going just the one rail. Oh, oh nice hit. Good solid hit, wasn't it? Okay, he might find himself in trouble again. Nice safety on here again, as you always say. Tony, the great buddy Hall used to say to you, Play the easiest shot. Yeah, do whatever comes easiest. And that was even easier than trying to get it back behind the 10, see? <laughs> Our final will be at 7 p.m. tonight, so there won't be long to wait. Victor already waiting. Mm -hmm. You know, there, were, there were several uh, pretty uh, awesome jump shots that Yap made in the last match. 
So don't be surprised if he makes this. He's really good at these jump shots. I think I saw him jump a great two ball and make it on the big screen. Very proficient with his short stick. Not this time. Good solid here. Now then. Although it's gone in, it didn't go in the right pocket. So Wojtek does have the choice here, Tony, but I can't see him giving this one back, can you? Yeah, no, no, there's no way he's going to give this back because, I mean, he can pack it in either corner. You know, the thing is that it's probably easiest to pack it in the low left-hand corner pocket so that way he can slide the cue ball between the side pocket and, and the nine ball. Unless he's going to run into the seven, that wouldn't be a bad shot if he has the angle to do that. Mm. Well, I think he, he focused a little too much on the cue ball there, mate, which is probably why he overcut it. Yeah, his eyes drifted. Now, I, I remember you mentioning that in you, your video, and you talk about it all the time. Don't let your eyes wander, because your cue will do the old chicken wing, Tony. <laughs> yeah. Not sure he can can he cut this in off the rail? Just, yeah, just to, to contain his safe. Does, doesn't want to hit the four. He has though, so first real, real chance here for Chef Chick. I never watched this young uh, young gentleman play before. It's my first time actually. He's actually a two time junior European champion in eight ball and nine ball. And he's been there or thereabouts, although he's never actually won, I don't think, a Euro Tour. He always seems to place top eight or something like that. So he's like 20 years old or something? He's or 27. 27, okay. Yeah. But there's a whole bunch of them. Mirsko Fortunski, Conrad, musician. Victor Zelinski, of course. Masiol. But Shapla. Yeah, Fortunsky and I share the same birthday. We're both April Fool babies. So. I've got two raps to write on that day. Yeah. Then. That's coming up soon, isn't it? So let's see what he does here. Let's see if he ends up trying to get straight on the seven so he can draw straight back or with an angle so that way he can go to the other side. I think he tried to get straight. Yeah, and I think he's managed it. I think he can... Well, even if, he hits, in a bit. even if he hits the right side of the nine, it'll send the cue ball in that direction anyway. So I think he's fine here. Oh, perfect. You didn't even have to hit it. That's yeah. even better. Beautiful stroke that was, wasn't it? How well did he strike that cue ball then? He told me about a year ago, I was commentating on him on an online challenge match and he said at the time give me two years and I'm going to be at the top very positive works very very hard and it shows certainly does hard work pays off guys and he's very determined So in it goes. So let's just have a little talk about your your clinics, Tony, that you're putting on. When we first talked about them, you only had one booked in. Now you've got another one booked in. Yeah. So just tell us a little bit about what you're doing. My wife helped me set up uh, TonyRobles.com. She built a really nice looking site for myself. So I'm taking advantage of that. And I'm going to start doing clinics all over the country. So I booked one uh, through a good friend of mine, Jude Rosenstock. Also with a little bit of help of uh, Little Chris from Little Chris Pool. And we're going to be doing a clinic. I'm going to be doing two clinics on Sunday, May 22nd at Betsy's and at Skinny Bob's in Austin, Texas. So I'm really excited about that. Looking forward to it. Anyone interested in having me 
uh, possibly do a clinic in your state, feel free to visit my site, TonyRobles.com, or, or just uh, send me a message on Facebook. I'd love to be able to have the opportunity to do that. Um, I also want to thank everyone uh, last match and for this match for the support. Please smash that like button because it goes a long way. So let's hit that like button. We have uh, how many? 1.1K viewers. If you can hit that like button, I mean, that would be great. And welcome everyone in the chat. Let's and everyone go. that's tuning in from all over the world. Chef Chick breaking off second rack, leading one to zero, first set. Big break. Very nice Looks break. Like he's got a good break as well. He's got everything, yeah. this guy. And now, has he got a shot on the one? He has. And look at the two ball, Tony. Does yeah. he finish anywhere in the centre, would you say? Yeah, and I think that there's a pretty good chance that if uh, next time that Aloysius uh, gets a, an opportunity to break, he's probably going to break from that same spot. But he's going to have to hit it just as hard. Look at that lovely wide stance, Tony. Mm -hmm. Keeps the body nice and still. Evenly spreads the weight. It's okay, just a little brush off the fort. He's fine, he just has to draw it back about a foot. Foot, foot and a half should be fine. He looks the part, doesn't he? Slim, very well dressed, good. I look, he might even be able to keep the pocket and come off the rail. That's even better. Got now, a little bit further. See, now there's a question here. Would you go two rails and just keep it simple? Shoot the four by where the six is? Or would you go two rails and try to play the four in the side pocket? I'll play the four in the side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I kind of like that because I can let the cue ball go. Let I don't have to yeah. worry about, you know, rolling it, you know? Yeah, just let the cue. Oh, oh wow. He's... Wow. I was not expecting that at all. Well, I certainly wasn't either. Maybe just took his eye off it again, Tony. You never know. So, chance then for Aloysius, just when you think he was going to yeah, clear up. He's definitely not happy with himself about that. I wouldn't be. Who would be? Because, you know, Yap, yeah, I mean, he pounces on you every time you make a mistake, for the most part. Now he's played to hold it. Didn't, well, and it doesn't go past the nines. He's going to have to play it into this bottom right-hand corner if he wants to take it on Tony, or maybe he can cut it to the side, can he? He can cut it in the side, but it's a pretty extreme cut. Yeah, He's probably wondering, wow, what happened there? I prefer it in this bottom right, to be honest. I mean, if he's able to hit it with no spin and he decides to cut it, he can hit bottom rail, top rail, and then stop by the center of the table. He's caught it in the side pocket. So he's going to go downtown, uptown, and then back to the center but of the table, right? I mean, for me, that, that that's the safest route because the other route is hit it low left. But then not, now, you, now you have to really put a lot of spin on it and when it's not necessary. And he does have really good control of the cue ball. I'm be surprised if he doesn't even end up going up. To, oh, oh, he overcut oh, he it. Overcut. So he did go the uptown, downtown route, but he overcut the ball. <laughs> Are you waiting for me to react to uptown, no, downtown? No, no, not at all. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. I did notice it the first time. So, a chance then. Back at the table earlier than he would have thought. I think he probably was thinking it's going to be 1-1. One, one. Now he's got the chance to open up a two-rack lead in this second semi-final of this year's Alpha Las Vegas Open, live from here in the Rio All Suites Casino in lovely Las Vegas. What a strange second rack, huh? Yeah, bizarre. Let's have a look at his fundamentals. Let's have a look at the tip of this cue, Tony, going through the ball. Nice little stroke. He stroked, he didn't poke. <laughs> I saw on Predator's website this morning, on their Facebook page, they, they put in that little bit of banter and chat between us two about the, the stroking, not poking. Oh, yeah, they did? Yeah. Nice. Got to check it out. Let 
missed that 10 ball. Oh, he went close to that. Now he's got a nice angle on this one. It was a perfect angle. Just slide it over a bit. Then go two rails with the with the on the nine ball towards the ten. Unless he gets straight on the nine ball. If he gets straight on the nine ball, then he just draws back. You don't want to hit this with too much speed. Very right. nice. Yeah, that's nice. That's perfect angle, isn't it? If you <laughs> could put the cue ball anywhere, you'd put it there, Tony, wouldn't you? I use just the one rail. Nicely played. So this is going to be 2 0 when this 10 ball goes in. And if it does, we'll take just a quick break, but we'll be back with rack number three very, very soon. Welcome back to lovely Las Vegas. We're playing the second semi-final of this year's Alpha Las Vegas Open. It's past stop number three on the CSI Predator US Pro Billiard Series and this second semi-final between the man at the table ready to break off Wojtek Shevchik and Aloysius Yap. With me in the booth, Tony Robles. Yeah, let's look at this smash again. He hit it pretty good last time. And he lost a little bit of control there. That's why he, oh, uh, fortunately he scratched. He scratched. Probably why he scratched. He, he missed hit the one ball. And you know, that's what, I mean, there's always a chance you're going to scratch, even if you hit it perfect. I mean, how many times have we seen, you know, someone stop the rock in the center of the table and then the ball comes and just yeah, get kicked it, in. Yeah. kicks it in. Yeah. It just increases it a bit when you miss hit it, right? Yeah, more movement on it. Both players hoping for a shot at the $30,000 first prize for this year's Alpha Las Vegas Open. Hmm. I think you want to go a little lower than that. I mean, not that he's in bad shape here, but just going to have to work a little harder for it. Losers guaranteed eight in this match, Tony, so not too bad. Not bad at all. I wouldn't mind that, would you? No. Not at all. Who would? <laughs> Very nice. Oh, yeah. Judge the gap between the nine and the ten beautifully. This is nice pace. Great angle on it. 
very appreciative appreciative audience. Mm -hmm. A little round of applause. And the four to, I mean, well, not so much a four to the five. The six to the seven is going to be the key to this rack right here. You know, if he gets right on that five ball and ends up with just enough angle in the six ball to draw between the side and the, and, and the eight ball, then he should be in good shape. But worst case scenario, if he ends up on that side for the six, which I doubt he will, then you have to figure out another way. Take a longer shot on the seven to get to the eight. Did he overhit that? I think he might have overhit that. He's going to be. It's going to be very tough to get on the six ball from here, unless he have a slight angle. Maybe we can get a better look at that. Not quite Mount Everest. A Not bit Mount top. Everest. Yeah. A bush. <laughs> <laughs> Mount Everest, little, uh, Mount Everest, when I say Mount Everest, for those of you who, who don't, I'm not familiar <laughs> with my commentary, that usually means that he's frozen on top of the ball. So he's not exactly frozen. He's, he's, got, he's like shooting over a bush. More like a bonsai <laughs> tree, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so he's got to cue this well. So it looks like it looks like he can draw it past the left side of the eight. And if he can, then obviously he's, he's going to end up with a nice angle in the six to get to the seven. Oh, how well has yeah, he played he that? Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Now, oh. he, now he draws right past C8 on the bottom to the right, going towards the side. And look, look, at, look at his control here. Look at his control here. See? He doesn't want to go straight. He's okay. So it looks like both players... We're up for this, Tony. Both queuing well. Who's going to make the least mistakes? And who's going to punish those mistakes? That's what yeah. it's all about. And those small numbers next to their names, guys, is their Fargo rate. And I didn't realize that Chef Chick was so high. Yeah. Yeah, it's very impressive. He's been accruing his points in Europe. He's played a few big events. I think he's off to the World Pool Championships next in Milton Keynes. And he plays on the Euro Tour a lot. So this from Eloisha Schapp. Well, well, half the deficit. It's just two, one now. So we are in lovely Las Vegas. And Tony, what I thought I'd do is when you two were commentating this morning, mm -hmm. I thought I'd just have a look and try and find a few fun facts on Las Vegas. Oh, nice. And I did some in the first match. Now then, the Bellagio. Everyone knows the Bellagio Hotel has more than 1,200 fountains in its famous water show. And how about this? Have a listen to this, Tony. If you took all of the neon tubing and put it in a straight line, it would measure more than 15,000 no miles. Way. That is about five and a half times the distance from New York to Los Angeles. Are you serious? I'm serious. That's crazy. Wow. That is, a fun, that is a fun fact. It's a fun fact, wow. right? I so, knew there was a reason I kept you around. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go then. Rack number four, Aloysius Schiap to break. Trailing 2-1, first set, second semi-final of this year's Alpha Las Vegas Open. Oh, the 10 went in. The 10's gone. It will be respotted. Last tournament, that would have counted. Mm -hmm. We did a rule change. So the 10 will come back up. Spot it. John thinks he's doing a shootout. Look, he's placing that 10 ball with the white facing up. That's how we place it on the for the shootout. But we don't place it there. It's four inches directly behind that where it's racked in the rack. Now then, is he going for this? 
We saw him overcut a ball a little while ago, the four ball into the side. Can't really get position on the two here, Tony. Well, I mean, you know, if he runs into it just right, he could, if he's going to go for the one ball, he might as well try to run into it. If, if he can avoid, you know, hitting the, the two ball and avoiding a scratch. You know, the two might be far enough away from the top rail where he doesn't have to worry about the scratch. But if he's going to go for it, he might he might as well, you know. Needs to try. draw. Look at this. Yeah, he's played, oh, he's played the bank. Yeah. Oh, mighty close as he left it on. Yes. No, I don't think he can get to the angle. Can he, Tony? Can he get to the putting angle? I don't think he can make this. It doesn't look like it goes. Well, this is a tough safety as well, then. What's well, he going to do here? I mean, you know, he, he, he could hit it, uh, you know, slightly, ever so slightly to the left of the one ball and try to, you know, either hit the nine ball and stop the cue ball there and send the one ball uptown. The problem with that is that the seven can, can act as a stopper depending on how you hit the one ball. The seven's a pretty big ball there. Causes extension. Both players do have one 30-second extension per rack in addition to the usual 30 seconds. After a break or a push-out, that's doubled to 60 seconds. So let's have a look at this shot. Let's see. So he is going to go with the follow, right? Hit it with a little bit of his pace, right? Oh, yeah, he got it. He got it past it. Right. He got it past it. I mean, he's unlucky. He's left the, the one-two combo on. Well, it's not an easy one-two combo because, you know, it's not like the two is literally right in front of the pocket. It has enough room so that if you hit the right side of the two, boy, it won't go in. Excuse me. That's what I was doing. Yeah. I was <laughs> yawning at exactly the same time. Nothing yeah. to do with the match, of course. It's just been a, a long four days, hasn't it? Yeah, I haven't been getting much sleep because I of my, how my, are my you? asthma. My I asthma has just been kicking you. my butt big time. I wanted to ask you, mate, how are you feeling? A little better today, but still uh, gasping for breath. I had asthma as a child mm. up until I was 14, and it's a very frightening thing to have, especially as a child, when you don't know what's going on. Yeah. I think he got away with it there, my friend. I think he's got an edge here, so he can thread that cue ball between the rail and the eight and the seven. Maybe over behind the five ball, Tony. Mm, yeah, you know, you want if he can hit the edge, you gotta go two rails between the eight and the two and try to put him behind the five. But you know, you really want to minimize the movement of that of that one ball and try to stop it in front of the four if possible. That way, at least if you don't get behind the five, you still, you know, well, there you go. A result there. Yeah, not exactly how he played it, but well, the key there was that he made sure to stop the one in front of the four. I think that was the most important part of this the, this shot. Might go three rails here, or is the nine in the way of that? I'm wondering if he's thinking of a mass A. You know, if he can catch the edge of that one ball and put it in front of the four ball and put the cue ball on the other side, there's a possibility for a safe there. Lots of Let's left see if he does English. it. Look, 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 you see? Oh, see, he tried to hit it thinner. Try to hit it a little thin, just enough to get the one on the other opposite side where, where it's at now in the cue ball on the other side of the four. Almost pulled it off. Now here, you want to make sure that you line up the one with the four and with the cue ball, just in case you don't get it behind the 10. It makes it almost impossible to, to, to hit the ball. Yeah, he definitely hit that a little too hard. Yeah. And a little bit thin as well, I think. He was trying to come past that 10 ball, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. Can he get him behind the four here? It's hard to tell. I would have to get a better view. I'm looking at the side of the table here, not the monitor, and it looks like it's very tight. Yeah, it is possible. Yes, he hit it really good. But maybe he's just sending by the 10. See that, by the 10? That's what he was trying to do. I'm wondering if he was trying to run directly into the eight and stopping the cue ball because he hit the top of the eight. Yeah, you know? he just caught the eight, didn't he, there? I think Aloysius Yap first came to, you know, real public knowledge was at the US Open in that famous 
Shane, did he call extension or didn't he call extension? And in the end, it was Aloysius Shap that sorted it all out and said, I'll just let him play, which I thought was lovely. He won oh, yeah. a lot of fans on that day. He sure did. And he, he, he admitted afterwards that if they would have given him ball in hand, he would have just tapped the cue ball to give it right back to Shane. Yeah, absolutely. Very gentleman. classy. Yeah, classy. That's the word. So let's see what he does. I would call the 10 in the side just in case. Even even if you, because, I mean, it doesn't hurt to call the ball. You know, oh, I, look, where's this cue ball going? Is he going to go behind the three? No, it's on mm -mm. the reach. Well, it goes past the five ball. Yeah, it looks like it, he can he can definitely make it in the corner pocket. <clears throat> Excuse me, and then just draw back for the for the side pocket. Make sure you go past the two ball a bit. Played Are you on the lovely. other side of the of the three ball? Played it perfect. Does that say Poolaholic on his shirt? I don't know, but I do know they have a company here that has a booth Poolaholic. I like going two rails here. Okay, so he did have uh, almost a straight shot. That's good. Um, there's a company that here that has a booth called Poolaholic. So I, I, I think they have uh, a shirts and stuff like that, all types of different gear. I hope they paid you to wear that, Voitek. You're worth money now, mate. <laughs> yeah. Reaching the semi-final. Oh yeah, of one of these big tournaments, and I, you can say it's a big tournament with prize money, Tony. One hundred twenty-five thousand total prize money in this particular one. I don't see any problems here at all. Noth no, nothing really difficult, super difficult, or anything like that, or even touchy. Because once you, the seven is, you know, good thing about having the seven. This is what I try to tell. Players when they're playing eight ball in straight pool, you know, it, it's always easier to go for a ball that's slightly above than from one to to one that's even slightly below that, than as, as opposed to the opposite. So, for example, since the seven is there, it's a lot easier to play position from the seven to the eight than if the seven were by the first diamond closest to the corner pocket. You follow what I'm saying? So, so if the a little bit, yeah. yeah. If the seven, if the seven wire by the first diamond is supposed to that middle diamond, then you got to work a little harder to get on the eight to come down for the nine. Is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously, if you're playing nine ball, ten ball, you don't have a, sh a, a a choice but to shoot it because you're shooting the balls in numerical order. But when you have that option playing eight ball and straight pool, it really does make the patterns a lot easier when you look for stuff like that. Well, hopefully that will be part of your clinic and you'll be installing that into players' brains. That's a plan, Stan. You're the man. you got to have a plan, <laughs> Stan. It was a great song that was by Eminem, Stan. One of his first ones. So, straight forward from the 9 to the 10. To go three one up and get onto the hill, and if this goes in, we're going to go out just for a few minutes. But we will be back with Wojtek Shevchek on the hill, lead three one.
And we are back. Greeted by a big round of applause. We take Shevchik. 3-1 up. Breaking on the hill. I mentioned earlier that he'd done well in the Euro Tour. He actually finished runner-up in the 2012 Austria Open. Wow. Oh, look at that smash. Gave them a clout, as we say. Wow. Oh, where's the temple going to go? Don't ruin the one. It hasn't, I don't I mean, think. I mean, it? I mean, he, he hit those. So he smashed those. If people would smash that like button the way he smashed that rack, we'd be in great shape. You know that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, unfortunately, got a little. Push, yeah. yeah. Where, where would you push to, Tony? You know, one thing I used as a guide for years, the, when I first started, I said, man, where do I even start? And then I realized later that I could use the pockets as a guide to start out with. And then if I feel that none of the six pockets is where I want to be, then I start using the diamonds. You know, and that, that way I, I say, what if I move it here? What if I move it there? What if I move it there? And then I look for the shot that I think is going to make it so that it's not easy to pocket the ball. Or if it is, it's not easy to play position or it's not that easy, you know, to play a safe. So just to give them something to think about. That's not always going to be the situation, but at least you're, you're, you're doing, you're looking or giving yourself. Like, for example, if you move this by the middle diamond, well, it's obvious that he's going to hit the one ball and leave the cue ball behind the 10. You don't want to do that. So that's out of the question. You use the process of elimination. Just. Wow. See there, the, the, the one doesn't go, I, I believe, doesn't go past a four ball should he decide to bank it. But it's not as easy to get behind that 10 from there. What about getting behind the eight? He might be try to put him behind the five and place a one ball in front of the four, I mean, the three and the two. You see, use a three and the two and place the one ball right there and try to keep the cue ball. He was trying to put the cue ball by the five. Your your knowledge always astounds me, the way that you call these shots so well. Why aren't you, a, why aren't you in there playing instead of up here talking about it? <laughs> I, I, I am not as dedicated as these guys are. I'm 55 years old. I'll never have the time to put, put in like they do. I just, I, it's just, and it's not going to stop me from playing or trying. Oh, what a shot he's played here. Is he going to get coverage? He deserves to at least to get behind the two here. I think he's left it, no. He definitely left it there. Um, he hits these balls really clean. Uh, this one it might require him to hit it with some speed unless he decides to just pocket it and then possibly play a safe on the two. It's kind of hard to kill the speed on this cue Can ball. Can he not go twice across time? Well, that's what I'm saying, that, you know, he usually hits these cleanly. If he feels comfortable, he's going to go for it across. But if he doesn't feel comfortable, you know, it looks like he's, like, um, is he elevating? Slightly. You know, worst case scenario, so that means he's going to go across. Wow, he didn't get near that. Wow. Wow. Oh, he almost got away with it. I can't remember the last time I <laughs> saw him hit a ball that bad. It's so tough to hit that shot accurately when you're when you're elevating the cue stick, you know. <laughs> can't believe it. But that's the thing that you know when you're at this level when you're in the 800 club it is, it is so easy for these kids to forget the previous mistake because they know how important it is to maintain that focus for their next opportunity. Because if um, um, if they don't, then then they have no shot. Apart from a hundred points, what is the difference between a seven fifty and an eight hundred, Tony? Oh, I think it's massive because uh, you know the the players at the eight hundred club, in my opinion, have more weapons in their arsenal. You know, whether it's a, more kick shots, more bank shots, you know, just more weapons in general. And they, they execute it more consistently, you know, whether it's better cue ball control. I think that's what separates the numbers, to be quite honest with you. Is, is part of it, some people are just champions who are born with that special little something extra that, you know, 
when you get to a final, you actually win it. You, you know, you can come from behind from impossible positions and. Yeah, no, it, that you know, it, it, I mean, some people have a knack for that, but it's not. A, that's not a skill that's impossible to learn. You know, and I'm talking about you know having a, a champion's winning attitude. Because I mean, the, any sport that you've seen has said that it's ninety percent mental, and it's absolutely true. You can practice twenty hours a day, and make a shot twenty thousand times in a row. But if you don't believe with every fiber of your being that you're going to make that ball when it comes to a pressure situation, you you're not going to make it. You know, that's why most of the elite players, whenever you see them miss a ball, they're shocked and stunned. Why do you think they're shocked and stunned? Because they never expected to miss it to begin with. Mm -hmm. Well, he'll be hoping he hits this one ball. He has hit it. So another little safety ball, and it's following the pattern of the previous four racks, really, Tony. There's been a lot of mm -hmm. safety and kicking. We haven't really had anyone running out yet. Yeah, I mean, if he can put him behind that three ball, he might be able to put him behind the three ball. I mean, the ten ball is, is a possibility, but behind the three or the two ball here. Oh, he decided to hit it softer. Wow, I'm surprised at that. See, I thought he was going to hit it harder than that and go braille between the eight and the three and then behind either the three or the two because at least that way he has a ten, the three, and the two to possibly put him behind. By the time September comes, that was a song, wasn't it? When September <laughs> comes, who was that by? Great American band, actually. Um, in Michigan, we need to get one of those TVs that we can have a draw on so we can start drawing some lines and putting imaginary cue balls in and stuff like that. <laughs> That's going to bug me now. Name this American band. When September comes. I also did... Does it ring a bell for me? They also did basket case as well. Is he going to play the three in the side, or is he going to draw back? He's running through. He's going to play in the same pocket. Wow, what a shot that yeah. is. I like the way he played that. Would he play it? Would he consider? He's going to go for the run out here, isn't he? Mm -hmm. No, you. yeah, you're going to play the four in the side or in the corner. I prefer to play it in the side because I kind of like, you, you know how we're always talking about going towards the ball, right? Yeah. Well, he's doing that, but the opposite. He's going on that line, but away from the ball. Yeah. So there's two ways to do it, going towards the ball, going towards away from the ball, but still in the same, while maintaining that same line. Mr. Travis Wilson, I see that you were asking me if I'm going to be doing commentary in Wisconsin this year. I plan to. I plan on playing, well, well, next year, yes, next year. Uh, but I plan on going in to Michigan and also to Ohio, and I'm pretty sure Mark will be there as well, right, bud? Absolutely. If I'm invited. I thought you, you, you just got that invitation just now. <laughs> so, going to pull one back here, is he? Take it to three two. So Vitek. Yeah, I would still play this in the side pocket. So it is going to be three two. So we're on the last day of this Alpha Las Vegas Open, Tony. And who, if anyone, has impressed you the most? over the last four days. Let's just go through your matches very quickly. Who did you play in the first round? Um, honestly, I don't even remember, to be honest with you. I, I know I, I lost my... Uh, oh, it's a, a gentleman by the name of Florigen Matic. Yes, Magic. Matic. Matic, Magic, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he yeah, was a pr pretty tough guy. And uh, then I lost to Corey after that, and then I played, I think it was Basar. Yeah, Basar Spia, who from uh, um, oh the, the Albania. policeman from Albania, can yeah, catch his yeah. friend. Yes, yeah, su super nice kid, um, and, and a hell of a player too. You play. You say you played uh, against Corey Jewell. People often mention his name when the Moscone comes around again. Is he good enough to play another Moscone? Do you think? 
I don't think he's playing at that level um, to be able to be on the team, to be honest with you. He does have the experience, though. Have you so still if got looking for the experience? Then you know, it's probably a good addition. Do you, you know, have any aspirations to play one more Moscone? <clears throat> you know, it's always in the back of your mind. You know, but I have to be realistic too. You know, you have to dedicate the time. If I if I were to think that I had a shot, then I, I would definitely put in the work. You know, but it yeah. takes a lot of dedication. It really does. You know, I. Uh, I'm more of a family man than anything. I, 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 my, my time with my family is extremely important to me. Well, someone that is dedicated and has got all the time in the world to practice is this 25-year-old from Singapore, Aloysius Yap. Trailing 3-2, looking to go heel heel. Fair to say it hasn't been, well, the, the fuse hasn't been lit yet, Tony, on the dynamite. There's no fireworks at the moment. Yeah. See, that's why I enjoyed watching Earl in his prime so much. Earl would take a one ball like this and just pound it 100 miles an hour into that corner pocket, go two rails and play position for the two and run out and, and probably run a seven pack from there. It's like... I, I've never seen anything quite like it. I, I, I got to watch him play a lot when I first started playing on the tour. And it, he was something He was something truly special. You know, and as, as much as I consider Efren Ray as the greatest all-around player that ever lived because he played all the games well, I don't think that there's ever been a shot maker quite like, like Earl in his prime. I got to watch him play in his prime, and, man, it, it, was a, it, it was incredible. You had to witness it. Yeah, I wish I had a done, to be honest. I was watching Steve Davis and Jimmy White back in those days. They all, they also played Moscone, didn't they? A couple of times. Mm -hmm. Jeremy's here in Vegas. I, I ran into him earlier. He's at the Q-Tech booth. Good solid hit. Now, is he going to get lucky? Doesn't look like it. I think he might let them just enough to make it. And if he did, we might have a tie ball game, my friend. Once again, I want to thank everyone in the live chat and everyone that's taking the time to tune in to support the stream. Uh, we appreciate each and every one of you and uh, appreciate all your comments. Appreciate your support. Appreciate uh, helping us grow this beautiful game that we all love. And I appreciate them appreciating us. Mm -hmm. That was a nice shot right there. Well controlled, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. He was queuing over the top of that eight ball as well. Or was it the six ball? Can't quite make it out on the screen. Sorry, guys. Oh, it's the two ball he was queuing over, isn't it? Of course it is. He's playing it now. I'm mm, pretty sure he didn't want to run to that nine, but... He should be fine here. Now, are you using the eight as a stopper here, Tony? You know, it all depends. If it all depends if he feels comfortable running directly into it. You know, some some players just rather go high right and go the three rail route, pass a nine ball. I, I don't think it's a bad thing, but again, it all depends on how he feels. See, he likes yeah, to go the three rails. Like See, wants to get a little closer to it. Oh. Look at that. Unfortunately, the spin didn't grab the way he was hoping it would. And this might be trouble. This might be trouble because if he can't see the, the fight, enough of the fight to make it. You know, sometimes I tell people when they say, man, if you have, you have an opportunity here to play a slightly tougher shot or very easy safe, you know, but you have an opportunity to tie it hill hill or win the match. What do you do? Do you go to the, for the, a lot of it depends on the situation, obviously, but I, I'm also a firm believer that every once in a while, that one extra inning that you give your opponent could, could end be up the being one. the one that they needed, the one opportunity they need to get lucky and beat you. So is he going to try to mass say this in? Yes, wow, he did. He yes, did. He did. What an incredible <laughs> shot that <laughs> is. You see what I was talking about? He says, slightly more difficult shot or play is safe. He decided to go for the slightly more difficult shot, and guess what? He gave himself the opportunity to tie the ball game. 
Incredible shot that. See, it's those little shots, I think. Separate the men from the boys in the nicest possible way. I mean that, of course. That really was a class shot, wasn't it? Oh, it was awesome. I bet Wojtek was sat in his chair thinking, well, he's going to play a safe on me here and I'm going to get back to the table at least. He's okay now. So we are going to go heel heel, I think. So this 10 ball then. And we're going to go for a very short break and we'll come back with the conclusion to this first set. Welcome back to the second semi-final of the Alpha Las Vegas Open 2022. It's nicely poised. We're heel heel between Aloysius Yap, Wojtek Shevchek. Yeah, let's see how he hits this one, Mark, because I know he struggled all day long on this table. And if there's ever a time he needs to make a ball on the break and end up with a shot, it's now. Wow. wow! I mean, he hit those. So, everywhere. He it's hit like those so good that it's a shame that he didn't make a ball on the break. I mean, that's how you want to hit him. That's how you want to hit him. But I mean, you know, when you hit him, that, and, I, and I've always said it's amazing how someone can hit a rack that well and not get rewarded for it. But that's the nature of the game, right? It's like a pinball machine the way that. So now this young kid, this is his opportunity to take the first set and. He's going to need to take his time here, figure out which route he wants to take. He's probably going to go between the three and the cushion. If he leaves it even more or less where it's at now, he's fine. Just needs to make sure he doesn't end up on top of that eight ball or the five ball. Well. It's okay. Oh, he's fine here. He, he's just going to go across. Uh, I kind of like going off the second rail. 
and try to get straight on the three or just a slight angle to come off the cushion. Very nice. Now this is a bit of a tricky shot because even if he were to run into the nine ball here, has to make sure the nine ball doesn't tie up with the 10 in a bad way, I mean. Because getting to the four, I don't think it's going to be a problem. If he, if he can hit on the fixed side and avoid the nine altogether, that's even better. Great camera shot there. Yeah. But you see, by putting the nine ball there, now he's forcing himself to go to that side of the table later in the rack. But what I like about the speed that he hit it with is he didn't hit it with enough speed to where the nine ball could have possibly blocked or prevent the four from going in the corner. Oh, he's cool. Mm, I don't know if he's going to like this. I mean, he's not he, can still, he can still make it. He, he has a thin enough cut where he can come between the six and the eight if he cuts it in the corner. So I think he's fine. He just has to, you know, focus on making the ball. Cue ball's going to go there regardless, so there's no need to think about the cue ball here at this point. Just let it go. Very nice. And he went in between. Well, we have Maple against Carbon in the first semi-final. We've got Maple against Carbon in this semi-final. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Maple is waiting. Will he be playing Carbon or Maple? We're going to find <laughs> out soon. Wow, he missed that ball. Wow, I was not expecting him to miss that ball. Now then, what a chance for Aloysius Yap. Six sat up over the side pocket. Every Massive. ball out in the open. <coughs> As you say, it's all about getting over to the right side of the table from the eight for the nine. Would love to take this first set. Win the first one. You know the least you can end up is with a shootout. He can't make up his mind because over that 10 ball. Our 10 ball is kind of in the way. He, he might even, he might, he, I mean, he, he can even hit this with a little bit of top left, come off the second rail, and if he ends up parallel to the seven with the cue ball, that's fine, because he can always cut the seven and come one rail for the, for the, uh, the ball on the side, the eight in the side. You see, I don't think he wanted to do that, but I mean, he got away with it, he got away with it. Yep, holds his hand up to apologize. That won't mean anything to Wojtek. Wojtek, sorry. Mm-hmm. I remember growing up as a kid, Tony, listening to pool commentators and snooker commentators with difficult names to pronounce or even news readers and thinking, how do they do that? And I've got even more respect for them. <laughs> it's so yeah. difficult sometimes. <laughs> now then, he's got some work to do. Is he just going to take what he's given here, Tony, and just drop the cue ball onto the side rail and bounce off just a little bit? Yeah, I mean, you know, less than nine goals in the opposite, but I don't see any reason why he should move the cue ball a lot here. It's perfect. Uh, I know a couple of people are asking if this kid is really an 800. This is actually my first time watching him play, but from what I understand, he played a phenomenal event to this point. So, you know, maybe it's, you know, lack of experience getting this far in an event. It happens. Yeah, he's a Euro Tour runner-up, and you have to be pretty good to get to the final of one of those. Didn't quite win it. So, Aloysius Yap taking the first set, 4-3, already waiting for him in the final. Is Viktor Zelensky, who played great as well over the last four days. And who just recently won two big events in Europe. Yeah, exactly. And we've had the uh, the Co brothers have been here. Jason Shaw was here. Shane Van Boning. Sky Woodward, Billy Thorpe. There's been some big, big names here. Eklund Katsi was here also. 
So this is a pretty strong field, Tony. Mm -hmm. He even had a guy called Tony Robles in it as well. Mm -hmm. I, I love I love what uh, what you know Predator and CSI have done with joining forces to put this tour together. I think it's gonna this is gonna become a an extremely big deal within the next couple of years, and I think it's only gonna improve. Yeah, already more than doubled the prize money in less than six months. I remember back in Ohio last year, first prize was twelve thousand. Runner up was eight. And now they're playing for thirty thousand dollars. How is it that you pronounce this gentleman's name again? Wojtek. Wojtek. Shevchik. Okay, just I'm gonna stick with Wojtek. Okay. Wojtek. Okay, Wojtek. Mm -hmm. Wojtek. So Wojtek. What Wojtek needs to do here is just completely forget what happened at first set and just stay focused. And uh. Oh, he's well, caught the five first there. It's ball in hand. Referee John Lehman. He's like the referee version of Eagle Eye. He's Hawkeye. He can spot a foul a mile away. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's just going to play the three in the low right hand corner pocket. The th four in the same pocket, and then the five on the side pocket. It, 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 the, the key here is going to be the seven or the eight. He's going to have to get right on the seven because that ten in the side kind of, you know, takes away that that long rail on the left hand side of the table. Something that's always amazed me is how these guys can play so much pull. I mean, it's a pretty brutal schedule that these guys, I mean, this is the, what's this, the third game they've played already today. Mm -hmm. It's still the final to go. That's without all what they've done over the last three days. Started with 192 guys. Got a little funny there. He was disappointed in himself because he got a little funny there, but I think he's oh, in good shape. Look at that for a shot. Played that with low right. Spin it up. Nice shot, perfect. Kelly Fisher was here as well, of course. Jasmine Ocean should have been here, but she unfortunately caught COVID, so had to isolate for five days. But she will be here for the Women's Las Vegas Open, which will be starting, I believe, on the 30th. 64 women will be competing for the Alpha Las Vegas Women's Open. Really looking forward to that. We'll be showing that. And of course, we also have the, the World Temple, the Predator World Temple. When this Don't final. overhit that. Don't overhit that. I think he overhit it. Remember, I told you the key's going to be the seven of the eight. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. But, no, 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 it's fine. Um, uh, but, you know, I think he, he got just enough angle where he can draw past the 10 ball and play the eight ball in the right-hand corner pocket, unless he's going to squeeze it in between there, but I don't think he's going to do that. He's going to hit it low, and he's going to draw right past that 10 ball and play the ape on the top right-hand corner. Go ahead. What were you saying? I'm sorry. No, it's fine. You, this, that's more important than what I've got to say. All I was going to say was that when, as soon as the final is over tonight, the table fitters come in, and they completely strip the tables down and recover them again. Oh, they're going to recover them Absolute, for the World Temple? Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. For the Predator World Temple, all new cloths. So I was speaking to the table fitter earlier. Oh, wow. As soon as they might even start. Well, they will start just after the final. So we have a day off tomorrow, Tony. Yeah, we have a day off tomorrow. Um, I know um, Aloysius Yap and his table mate, Sharik Syed, have been trying to take me out for a stake for the last three or four tournaments, but we just haven't uh, had the time yet. You know, it's just the timing's been bad. Have I not been invited? Yeah. <laughs> I haven't eaten since I've been here. Well, they, they played in the American 14.1 last year, and I helped them with their straight pool game. And they, uh, in return, they wanted to take me out to a steak dinner. And I said, listen, that, that's great. You don't have to, but, but fine. So oh, I, I figure I'll go since it's my birthday this week anyway, so. But yeah, I'll, I'll ask for you if you want to, bud. 
We would love to have. Now you. I don't want to. I don't want to spoil. I don't want to spoil your little party. So Aloysia Jap will be feeling much better now. Bobby Chamberlain, how are you, bud? Oh, Mr. Straight yeah. Pool Man. Bobby Man. Although I don't play as much as I used to, I would love an opportunity to go up to that table and see if I can at least run 200. <laughs> you know. What's your highest? Yeah. My high run, my highest run straight for is 268 balls, and I actually did it. I did it in a league match. Only 400 short of John Smith's record. What's that? 400 short of John Smith's mm. record. Yeah. Thanks for the birthday wishes, everyone. I appreciate that. Yes, I am a pool playing fool. I'm, I was born on April Fool's Day. Oh, he's scratching so, the side here. Mr. Not Yap, what he just was scratching for. the side. <clears throat> so, fresh start, fresh set. And I think he, well, is he surprised he's not? I was going to say, he must play this 2-10 combo, surely. Yeah, as I was saying yesterday, these young kids nowadays, they make these combos look like hangers. They still struggle with these combos, you know, because but th th that's the thing. Well, again, when you're playing every day, they look like hangers to them. Well, this could be a very, very, very quick wreck. He needs to play with a bit of pace, though. doesn't want it staying there for Aloysius, should he miss it. Scratch a scratch. In it goes, and we're going to go for a quick break, guys, but we'll be back with wreck number two. We go again, nicely poised, 1-1 one, one in the second semi-final of this Las Vegas Open. And I don't often do shout-outs and hellos, but I want to do a very special one. A lady, well, she's the biggest Kelly Fisher fan I've ever known. And a good friend of mine as well, Carly McGee, is staying up late. And she will probably stay up for the final as well. She's in the UK. Hi, Carly. Thanks for your kind words. Glad you're enjoying it. Oh, look at that for a break again as well. Wow. It's just amazing, how, again, how you can hit him so well and I get rewarded, right? Hit it absolutely perfect. I thought that one, cue ball straight back down the table. It almost killed it, you know? Mm-hmm. Now he's got to go for the cut here, surely.
What doesn't he like about this, Tony? What's going through his mind here? He wants to make sure that he can kill the cue ball. You know, this is one of those awesome Efren Reyes shot. I've never seen anyone kill the cue ball quite like Efren. He can hit this ball super low with a nice touch just to barely get the cue ball to have a little forward momentum, but not so, you know, hard where it has draw and just to kill it. He can also go three rails, go past the 10 and lead the cue by the center of the table if he can get past that four. Love a kiss on the nine look, here. That's that the shot nice. that Efren does. Look, look at that. Look, look how great he hit that ball. Yeah, that's the brilliant. shot that I'm talking about. I know he's a huge Efren Reyes fan. Who isn't? I actually got lucky enough to see him play live at the Derby City Classic this year. What do you think about him? I mean, obviously, I'm not. I'd rather have seen him at his best, but he's just got such this aura around him when he walks into a room you know you know he's there you feel it mm -hmm. oh yeah the whole room there's a buzz goes around the room when i used to walk into a tournament room a practice room when earl was practicing <laughs> there were always at least 15 20 people there it was like an entourage he's like like an entourage it was like celebrity status type you know and it was hilarious you know he would look at people as he's running out the table he says you know, do you know I'm four-time player of the year? Yeah. This champion, that champion, and like that, that. No one can touch you. I, I feel like I was listening to Muhammad Ali. I went up to the, um, I went up to him at the international this year in Virginia, and I asked him if he'd do a quick interview, and he said, "Who are you? Do you know who I am? <laughs> I'm six times world champion. I'm Moscone champion. <laughs> I'll give you the eight. So let's see if he can kill the cue ball here. If he can't kill the cue ball here, then he's going to go right in between the seven and the five. Now I know. Oh, he can, yeah, he should be able to kill the cue ball there. Now I know why they call you the assassin. You've said nothing but kill the cue ball for the last <laughs> five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot the silent bit, though, Tony. Shh. <laughs> see, now for the seven... When he shoots a six, he wants to make sure that he stops anywhere near the center of the table. With enough cut where if he has to go back and forth to play the eight in the top right-hand side and the lower right-hand side, he's in good shape then. Yeah, he'll probably play just one of those nice little draggy shots here again. Cue ball roughly where it is now, Tony, maybe. Oh. oh, he's gone harder. Oh, Where's what? he gone with that? Oh, that is weird. What a shot that was. Wow. Believe me, I know he's just as shocked as we are. <laughs> that is a complete total surprise. That was not expected at all. He's scratching his head. He can't work out what he's done there. Well, sorry, Aloysius. Don't look to me for help. I don't know either. <laughs> wow. So straightforward from here on in, you would think. Even nine into the same pocket. Or is he, you know, he's coming through for it in the side, is he, Tony? I can't tell if he has, oh yeah, no, he's going to play in the same pocket, I think. I don't think he wants to hit this too hard. Not even look there, that's how straight he was, look at that. Wow. How weird would that been? and where's he finished there? Well, I, I think he's fine here. I think. Well, actually, let me see it. Can we take a closer look at that? Because I'm trying to figure out how much angle he has. Does he have enough angle where he can just follow it and play it in in the opposite pocket? Yeah, yes. there you go. You see, so he might play in the same pocket. Yeah, come across the face of it. As well, because he could hit it. He could hit it full enough to come down there. You know. So he's going to take a two-one lead again, like he did in the first set. In it goes, 2-1 it is to Wojtek, Chev Chick. <laughs> <laughs> said so, Wojtek, right? Wojtek, yeah. We'll just keep Wojtek. it to that, shall we? Now then, 
everyone has a telephone these days, don't they? Every mm-hmm. person is carrying around a telephone. Well, mm-hmm. have a listen to this. The Golden Gate Hotel and Casino here in Las Vegas was the place that had the first ever telephone installed. Really? Yes. <laughs> wow. That? So, still to come tonight is the final of the Alpha Las Vegas Open. It will be Viktor Zelensky. He's already there from Poland. Will he be playing Singapore's Aloysius Schapp? Or will he play the man coming to the table now, Wojtek Szewczyk? I think uh, Aloysius is still trying to figure out how in the world that Cuba went in that corner pocket. Oh, it was winning that pace as well. It's his fault totally. Mm-hmm. Just misjudged the, the angle on the five, I think. Look at them eyes flicking from the cue ball to the object ball. Now they're on that object ball. There, bang, leaps into action like a, like a, a spring. <laughs> yeah, he's going he's gonna to probably bury him behind that three ball. Yeah, look where the ten's gone. He has just enough angle to come off the left side of the one ball slightly. That way, when the cue ball comes off the rail, it freezes on the three to the point where he can't hit that long rail. Or is he going to bank it three rails and put it under the two? Because it looks like he's hitting it long. No, no he's not. So again, it. if he did, made he, that lovely drag shot, Tony. See, that's what he was trying to do, though. Remember, he was trying to lay on the three, but on the bottom of it. Right, he just you know underhit it a bit. What about so kicking this and calling the tent? Kick it, call the tent, cue ball behind the two. Well, can he hit the top rail to to hit that? I think he can. Yeah, as well. oh, if he's he can. Game, then, yeah. yeah, why not? Might as well. I don't know what he's called if he's called anything. Called it. Well, he's just called an extension. That's what he's called. Mm-hmm. Yeah, why not? Why not call the tempo? You might as well. You'll be sick if you make it and you don't. Absolutely. Remember, Mika Imminem made one on here. He was banking, trying to bank the one and made the 10. Or is he just going to try to put him behind look, the three? Look, look, look. That's heading straight towards the 10. Yeah. Though. No, no, he wanted to control. That's what I said. That's why I said I think he just wants to put him behind the three. I actually said to Mika, and I got a straight answer. I said, why didn't you call the 10? He said, because I called the one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave the calling of the shots to you. Well, you got to call the 10 here. And he better call that extension soon. He did. Let's see if he banks it off that rail. Well, he wants this to run. He has, or he's left the bank in the side. Just the two past the three. Well, the carom on the 10. Yeah. Or the carom on the 10, which is which you is You can't really easier. defend yourself. You really can't you, you really can't defend yourself, but you know, when it comes to, you know, Nick Varner taught me something many years ago. He says, "The reason why you missed that combo tone against me Hill Hill was because you played not to and not to lose." Yeah, he's played the 10 and he's got it. Has he? Yeah, he has maybe. got it. Yeah. We're two Two, second set, one set. So, you know, when he, what, what he meant when he said you played not to lose, you know, it's like you didn't make a decision. Uh, you can't play not to lose by worrying about leaving your opponent safe just in case you miss the combo. You have to commit to the combo to make it. That's basically what he was telling me. Yeah, Steve Davis used to say to me he would play the percentage shot, but even if he did occasionally go for a 50-50 shot, he would make sure he went for it 100%. 
don't even think of the safety element. If you need to make the ball, make the ball. That's right. <laughs> so we're nicely poised. <laughs> two, two. I love this kid. <laughs> the really packed audience here. And I'll tell you what I noticed after the last semi-final, although there was about 40 minutes to go until the next one, no one left, or very few left the arena because they want, didn't want to lose their seat That's right. for this. And I wonder how many are going to leave after this one because the final isn't too far away. It's 7 p.m. here in Las Vegas. Yap breaking off 2-2. Two -two. He wants to get to the hill first. And he hit a couple of them really, really, like, con nice, controlled, just like that one. Wow. And didn't get rewarded. Let's see if he gets rewarded. Oh, nope, he's not going to get rewarded. He's going to come dry again. He's going right. to come oh, dry again. Oh, is the eight ball going to make oh, it? Oh, no. look at the 10 ball. Look at where the one is in the 210. Oh, dear. Dear, oh, dear. I mean, that is just so unlucky not to make a ball on the break there. And look, as you say, where the two has gone. So, yeah, he's taking a serious look at, look at, uh, at that combination. If he happens to stop exactly where he needs to, to the point where he can just shoot a stop shot on the combination, you better believe he's going to try to leave that cue ball behind a nine ball. I don't think it's that straight, though, Tony, is it? No, he has, he has an angle to get there. No, I'm talking about the, the two. The two. Whoa, wow, he, low, like, he done really there? really overhit that. But I meant, like, let's say he stopped between, you know, the two and the ten, parallel to the two and the, and the six, I mean. Yeah. Where he could just shoot a stop shot, make the ten, and if the, the, the ten doesn't go, the cue ball stays behind the nine when the two comes off the ten, you know? I think that's what he was playing He's for. He's still going to play it, though. Oh, it's, yeah. It's too tempting, isn't it? And the two and this will is to be go going on the hill. away. Yeah, you have to go for this. Yeah, and the two will be going away anyway. Might even go in the side off the nine, you know, well, the I two. Mean, Watch this know. two ball, Tony. I'm calling something here just for a laugh. Yes. You know what go happened last time I called it? Yeah, that's right. I'm saying two in the side. Well, I'm saying two in front of the, that pack of balls and the cue ball on the opposite side of the balls, just in case it doesn't go in. Oh, but yeah. It went in. Right. It went in. Nearly went in the side, though. And we'll be
welcome back to the, well, we're getting to the business end now of this semi-final. Elisha Schapp, 3-2 down against Wojtek Shevchik in the second semi-final of the Alpha Las Vegas Open here in the lovely Rio All Suites Hotel with me, Tony Robles. Before I forget, I want to mention that uh, Loisius always asks us to say hi to Mama Yap, who always watches all his matches, as well as his girlfriend. I need to make sure I don't forget to mention that, because I do not want to lose my steak dinner. <laughs> is that what you got yeah. to do to get a steak dinner? <laughs> or did it involve yeah. teaching straight pool and giving shout yeah. <laughs> Well, look, same thing Look, the same thing that happened previous rack to Loisius happened to him now. He hit them pretty hard there, didn't make a ball, and... Uh, Left an opening here. This is a definitely a, a great opportunity here. If we can take a closer look at that three to see if it goes in the side, I think that, that'll that help us determine whether or not. I mean, if he ends up on that side of the two anyway, regardless, he can still play the three in the corner. I think he actually just trying does, to see. Tony. What's that? It looks to me as if it does. Yeah. He's just off the rail enough. Focus here. Make the ball. Cue ball's going to do what it's going to do. It's going to naturally come to the top rail and the side rail. As they say in New York, what are you going to do? <laughs> oh, how you doing? <laughs> well, then. Very, very nice. Very nice. I, I like where he left the cue ball there, actually. He's got a lovely angle on this. Might even play one of those from Reyes shots just to hold the pace of the cue ball. Just play a little bit of low left on this. Yep. Well, he's on it in either pocket here, isn't he? So, decision time. He, he's playing it down the end, I think. What's a bigger pocket if you play it down the end? It's easier to control, wow, too. Oh, he didn't hold back on that, yeah. did he? Crashed it in. Nice shot, Aloysius. So, just like the first <coughs> set, we could be going heel heel again. So I'm wondering if he's thinking of leaving the cue ball like between the 10 ball and the spot, the bottom spot, to, to go two rails past the seven and play the six in the top left-hand corner. That's what I see here. I mean, it's kind of tough to get on the other side of this of the uh, five ball. You would kind of have to get, you know, right in between them and, and closer to the 10 ball than anything, see? I just wanted a little bit more time. But this shot causes exception. <clears throat> Excuse me. And yeah, made sure he didn't. See, so now he goes two rails. Is past the, the seven. I was going to say, is the seven in the way? Yeah, he goes past the seven. And then uh, leave the cue ball more or less where it's at now, but, you know, probably a little little in front of that. Uh, the, the, it's the position that's in uh, that it's in now. See one two. Oh, he checked it up. Yeah, that, that, that's kind of strange. Why did he play right-hand English on that? Well, no, but it's not even just that. I mean, he didn't have to hit at that speed, you know. Wow, so many t twists and turns. I mean, listen, that, that that's a game of pool, you know. When, when you're at this stage of the tournament, you know, we all make bad mistakes here and there, and. Uh, He's going to need to make a decision here. Is he going to put him by the eight and put the six in front of the nine, ten? Well, let's see. Yeah, eight over. Cue ball over by no, the That's eight. what he tried to do. He tried to leave the cue. He, oh, he hit the hit six it, too thin. Too thin. And yeah, he hit it too a thin. a chance for an up and down. Wow. So, again, Wojtek must have been thinking, well, I'm out. Now, all of a sudden, he's back at the table. And we could be on for a shootout. Thank you, 
was his extension. Walks in on line. And you gotta go for this, Mark. I mean, this is for the this is to win the second set. It's no easy safety here. This is for the blue cheese. Wow, he's missed hey, it missed on the, the way up. ball, wow. And caught it on the way back. Good job the rail was here, as we say. Look at this. Now then, is he going to play this rail first? He didn't sell out. I don't think he sold out. He might have no. to bank the six ball. He might bank this ball, cross corner. And, you know, he, he can either bank it cross corner or, you know, come a little long and try to bank four rails. Or bank two rails and send the cue ball by where the eight ball is and the, cue, the the six ball in front of the nine or the ten. That might be the move there. You see? Send the six by the nine and the ten, but he underhit it. He underhit the six ball is what I meant. He wanted to leave the six ball in front of the nine and the ten, closer to the seven. Two chances in two shots for Wojtek. He must take this now. He's got to take this chance. Does he draw into it, or does he? What does he do here? I I can't tell how thick he can hit this ball, but if he did draw into it, he didn't want to hit it with a lot of speed. Nope. He hit oh, it great. Oh, what a great shot that is! <coughs> Going to go two rails here, possibly three. I like coming. I, I like coming off the third rail, the bottom rail here, because that way eliminates any chance of ending up frozen and straight on the eight ball. Oh dear. Yeah, no, I think he got there, he got it there. Is okay, yeah. I would play the nine in the side pocket on the left hand side. Or you could just hit it with a little bit of inside screen. Wow, look at that. Caught it a little bit thick. Wow. Almost missed that there for a second, right? Thought I missed. He missed that there for a second. Oh, Aloysia Shep will be kicking himself. He's going to be headed for yet another shootout. 11-10, mm -hmm. he won the last one. How long is this one going to go? So this 10 ball then will mean we will be going to a shootout. It also means we're just going to go for a very short break, guys. But don't go anywhere. Come straight back. This could be absolutely epic. In it goes. We'll be back.
Welcome back to a packed house here for the Alpha Las Vegas Open and it's a shootout, second one in a row on this table for Aloysius Yap. The last one went to 11-10. Here you see Temple spotted where it's racked in the rack. It's not on the spot, it's not on the pyramid spot. And we'll have four innings, we'll alternate sides, each player will play a shot from the same side and then we switch over to the other four innings whoever has the most oh and he's missed the first one the Loisius Yap wow showing a bit of emotion there and rightly so so yeah if we don't have a winner after four innings we will go to sudden death where the cue ball is moved back a diamond to make it just that little bit more difficult for the pros but a little bit more enjoyable for the fans mm -hmm. so here we go Voitex first spot shot oh straight in the heart of the pocket well played so now we'll switch over to the other side John Lehman will always Place the cue ball on the side. He knows he's going to be used for the next shot. That's how he remembers to, um, Tony. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice also the white part of the 10 ball is always face up. Here we go. Just remember, it looks like Saturn, right? Yeah. Makes the second one no problem. So it's one all, but Wojtek went second. So it's a slight advantage to him, especially if he makes this one. <coughs> Referee, John Lehman. I believe Michaela will be doing the final, but who's gonna be in the final? We'll know very shortly. Oh, played with great authority. He plays it low. How do you like playing it, Tony, or how do you play it when you play it? I can't even follow. You know, I think because you can hit it with a softer speed my speed I think if you know every time I've seen someone miss it at a crucial point of the shootout with draw they miss it really badly especially when they go to the top rail yeah right yeah. have you noticed that yeah when it moves back it becomes more difficult I think aiming low I just like aiming low because I think you don't have to be quite so accurate on the well he's missed two now fatigue might be setting in as well no, well, if he misses two, then all he has to do is make this one to win, right? Yep. Because he hasn't missed one yet, right? No. This is match ball. This will put him into the <coughs> final. If he makes this 10 ball, it's all over. And we will have two Polish guys in the final. What about that? That's awesome. So from junior champion of Europe in 2012... To find list in the Las Vegas Open. Oh, he's missed it. Wow. 
Wow. And if you notice, he took a little Bit longer, longer than yes. he did. Yeah, in the two previous shots that he made, he was really like convincing himself, you know, don't miss, don't miss, don't miss, don't miss, don't miss. Where, you know, most of the time when, when you aren't missing it, you're not thinking of it that way. No, you're just playing your normal, natural rhythm. Oh, well. Aloysius, yeah, but I honestly thought that was it then. I'm sure Aloysius did as well, the way he's been cracking them 10 balls in. So Aloysius, though, still has to make this one, or is it over? And he does make it. We're still going with 2-2. Two -two. Another <coughs> chance for Wojtek to win it, though. Nothing's changed if he pops this one. He's in the final. And that final will be in just over an hour. 7 p.m. Las Vegas time. Wow, I don't, can't believe he's wow. taken so much time. Wow. He, nearly, he nearly went twice. So now we are in sudden death, and the cue ball is going to go back wow. a diamond now. Two chances to win this semi-final for Wojtek, and he's blown both of them. So Aloysius Yap still in it. Unbelievable drama. Absolute silence in the arena. And in it goes. Ooh, almost overcut it, right, by a little well, bit. Well, now all the pressure is on Vortec, <coughs> Chef check because if he doesn't make it now, he's out. This format. Had people who knocked it and said, well, it's not a great format. And I'll tell you what, I'm thinking differently now. 30,000, this shot is worth. He's missed it. He's lost it. It will be Aloysius Yap versus Victor Valensky. Seven o'clock. See you then.